Hello, Internet. Welcome to another episode of Zon Plays Lots of Rare Games. So as you can see from the title screen here, the game we're going to be looking at today is called Digger T. Rock, Legend of the Lost City. Now, I had this one on the docket to run through in Let's Play format for a while, and I did not know, since this is an old game that I haven't played since I was a kid, I did not know that this was another rare game. It's pretty funny that a lot of the games that I've picked for the different Let's Play series so far have all been, mostly, have been made by Rare, but uh, for this one, um, I figured it'd be good to run through one because I haven't played it for a while, and two, I've never beaten this game either. Um, we're watching the demo here and you can see sort of the basics of the gameplay, but uh, this game is difficult. Uh, I remember a lot of the areas being tough to kind of navigate through, and I think I only beat maybe half the levels when I was younger. So I have no idea if this is going to be a full Let's Play or if this is just going to be a quick look, but if we go ahead and get started, we'll just see how it goes. So let's see. It looks like the music cut off. And right away, we're in Cavern 1, and just like a lot of the other games I've played so far, Digger T-Rock has a pretty good soundtrack. Rare's, Rare games have been pretty consistent in that they, they have good music and themes, pretty catchy. A lot of the levels here kind of remind me of the music from Battletoads. So we're dropped into the world, and our character here, this is the main character, Digger T-Rock, who always sort of looked like Charlie Brown to me, just with minor gear. So you control his movement, basic platformer controls, jumping, the B button is hit your attack button, and you basically just whack stuff with your shovel. It's like a melee attack, predating Shovel Knight by many, many years. I think the screen said this was developed in 90 by Rare, published by Milton Bradley, but made by Rare. So the goal of each cavern is to get to the end point. And you can see in the lower left where there's that door looking icon with the zeros above it. The way it works is you progress through the levels, exploring, finding treasure, and then you activate the exit. And then you have a set amount of time to get all the way through the level and get to the exit before it closes. And then you beat the level. So to kind of explain the controls here, this sort of textured look thing means I can climb up and down it and this sand substance here can be dug out with my shovel and I can sort of make pathways for myself and that's gonna come in handy later because I'm gonna need to dig my way through different areas to get to items or to progress so if we head to the right here those diamonds are currency I can use that to buy stuff later you can see that already little whatever those things are coming out of the walls they do damage I have a set life bar and lives and I know for this one if you run out of lives it's a game over there are no continues here you can get extra lives I don't know if you can get extra continues I think the game just ends when you run out of lives so let's not do that so these pillars here are the triggers for the end of the level so I have activated the door, you can see it's open in the lower left, and the timer slowly counting down. And so I gotta reach the door before it closes, otherwise I have to reset it and start over. And as we go, numerous types of hostile life forms, like mosquitoes, are gonna come after me and make my job difficult. I know there's, there's a couple more things to get before I hit the exit, which is right there. Uh, it kind of pays to scout out the level, explore, get as much items as you can, and then map a clear path to the exit. You don't have to necessarily do it on the first pass. And as you can see, when I pass through that section on the wall below, there are, I guess, secret corridors that teleport you around and drop you in different parts of the level. And by mining upwards, I grabbed some stones, which you can see in the lower right. Those are used as a range attack. If I hit the attack button, 
I can toss rocks. But there's a limited quantity of them. So what I'll do is I'll take the secret passage back. I think that's everything. This first cavern is pretty small. There's not a whole lot here. You can grab some rocks for later use. You can grab some diamonds for currency. And I think that's pretty much it. It's basically at your tutorial level. Let me double check down here. I think that's it. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and head on to the next level. So, that was level one. Pretty straightforward, the game does get more difficult as it goes, I guarantee it. This is a bonus game where you can get additional items. I think you get something if you get all the goblets, and you can stack up on diamonds. I am not good at it, so I died and didn't get all the bonus items. The Cavern 2, new level theme, different colored rocks. This level is a bit more complicated than the last one. And much like Wizards and Warriors that we played before, enemy spawns in this just keep coming. They don't ever stop. Fortunately, they can't pass through walls, but things like the mosquitoes and those little guys coming out of the, the walls, they'll just keep mobbing you and they will not leave you alone. So you can't really linger in one spot for too long. Now, another thing to note, which I demonstrated right there, Digger T-Rock cannot handle falls from high places. In fact, he will get squashed really easily. What I was supposed to do there was use the ladders that I picked up to drop down the corridor safely, but I slipped and fell and took a bunch of damage. So, don't do that. Let's see, we can go this way. Should be checking, should get into the habit of checking all of the upper areas for rocks. And so the mushroom, if I kick it by attacking next to it, and then I get it, it makes me pink. And refills my life and gives me this sort of super strength for a limited amount of time. Now, I kicked the boulder all the way across to the pillar. And I think it's there for good now. Normally I would have a set amount of time, the 60 second counter would just start ticking down. But I think because I kicked that over there, it's just gonna stay there forever and give me kind of unlimited time to explore the level. So that's nice. You can sort of st stock up on items. I think I will leave that mushroom there. I believe those are the only means of restoring your health in this. So, I guess it pays to just leave them sitting around and you can come back for them as you need them. While well, you're not being mobbed by angry mosquitoes. And I gotta be careful about triggering those rocks from above me. Because if they fall and hit me, I will die. I think they take off... I don't know if it's all my health, but a good portion of it. So I definitely don't want rocks falling on me. Maybe I can use a ladder here. I think that that fall would have killed me. I guess it's gonna pay to be a little more cautious here. Since I don't want to burn up all my lives. Let's see, is there another mushroom? There it is. Alright, looks like it fills me up to full each time, so that's nice. I can just sort of power through the enemies. I can't remember why it's not letting me... There we go. Didn't want that to fall on my head and kill me. Don't know if you can... Oh boy, I don't know if you can withstand a boulder if you're in that pink invincibility mode. I'm not sure I want to test that out at this point. Okay. So progression is forward. I can use my dynamite, which are these log things, to blow up barriers. 
Or if I had the mushroom power, I could just punch them. But I don't at the moment, so dynamite it is. Meanwhile, let's see if we can get some more rocks. There we go. Alright. I wonder if I can hit this dinosaur. Yep. So, dinosaurs are one of the more dangerous enemies you run into than this. But if you're in super mushroom mode, you can just kick them and they die. But I guess they come back if you leave the screen, so we have to deal with that guy at some point. Let's see, this corridor will take me all the way around. Let's see if I'm missing anything here. I don't think there's anything else to get. So I think I can pretty much just head to the exit. At this point what I care about getting are the equipment like ladders and dynamite and also the diamonds for use later. So I think we got everything here that I know of. So let's just head to the exit. Past our dinosaur friend here, Just eat up a bunch of my rocks, and that was level two. So let's see if I can get all of the things here. Nope, did worse that time. 